Merci, Monsieur Tannock, pour une minute trente. Uh, Madam President, High Representative, the EU is China's largest trading partner and is second only to the United States in terms of trade with the European Union itself. This relationship is hugely important and is only going to increase in size and importance with time. President Xi has visited a number of European capitals in the last few years, including a much publicized state visit to my country, the UK. There is no doubt, therefore, that EU-China relations are of key importance, but we must not allow this to let us shy away from our differences. This year, for instance, we must come to a decision as to whether or not grant China market economy, market economy status, a decision that is complicated by issues surrounding intellectual property rights in China, the steel dumping crisis, and the dominant role that the state continues to play in China's economy and foreign policy. Beyond trade, human rights violations in China are a huge concern. Everything from censorship of the internet to this week seeing Falun Gong activists campaigning against, outside our parliament against alleged brutal organ harvesting. Meanwhile, the one country, two systems in Hong Kong is under pressure from the mainland and the militarization of the South China Sea via the establishment of artificial island platforms are also of great concern. As negotiations begin on the comprehensive agreement on investment, finding a balance between reaping the mutual benefits of trade with our divergent values and human rights concerns and the bigger geopolitical aims will be necessary but by no means easy for the European Union. Thank you. Merci. Monsieur Kellam pour une minute trente également. Merci, Madame la Présidente. Madame Mogherini, I support, in principle, your new strategy. However, the challenge remains how to balance what is principled and what is pragmatic. Two and a half years ago, the European